Um, hello, Lisa, for my new year of Tatele Lava Mole Avanoa. Um, really good to be with you this morning, face to face. I'm not in an airport, <laughs> yeah. and I'm not in the car or the laundry. Yeah. Uh, you know, going out there for for my children. So I'm <laughs> here in my office in um, Porirua, and it's uh, very cold in here right. in Wellington. It's about eight degrees as well as I understand in Auckland. Same as here, no. In Tamakiwa, cold. Okay, honourable minister. Uh, there was a. Uh, a uh, pre-budget speech by the Minister of uh, Finance yesterday and this morning as well. Uh, what do you, is there anything there that would be good for our Pacific community here in New Zealand? Yes, yeah, so of course, um, Budget 2023 is, um, first of all, the settings for Budget 2023. You know, economically, uh, New Zealand, we're running at about uh, annually 6.9% uh, inflation. We're also running within a operating budget. So what they say is the balance that the government can make decisions on for for budget is around $4 billion. Uh, we also have really strong pressures from overseas, obviously, still the energy crisis issues that we're having uh, because of the Ukraine-Russia war, high inflation across uh, other uh, right across the, the globe. As well as um, for New Zealand, we're now recovering from some very significant weather events of early this year. And um, as you've seen, just in the last couple of days, there was more flooding throughout parts of Auckland and the Upper North Island. So that's the context in which, you know, like any any household when you have a budget, if you're faced with those sort of um, uncertainties as well as pressures, you know, the government has to also look within its budget what we're spending on and make some really, you know, make those decisions to where we need to tighten our belt. Mm. So what, so the first thing that the Minister of Finance has to do uh, every budget is look at what the window is, the opportunity, the money that they have, and then be able to obviously distribute it as fairly as possible. Mm. But this particular budget as well, we've made a really a significant um, look at the government accounts asking government agencies, uh, are there any way that you can save? You know, we've reprioritised some of our policies. So the outcome of that particular exercise has meant that Budget 2023 will also include $4 billion of savings. So basically we've found about $4 billion of savings within our current government agencies and a lot of that funding is basically going to go towards some of the, the existing cost pressures. And what I mean by cost pressures is like inflation, you know, because there's a number of government projects right across all the different areas. So that particular $4 billion of savings means that we still have that operating budget of another $4 billion to make for new initiatives. Mm. So um, yesterday, the minister, it's important I set out that context because um, the other important thing is our debt you know, compared to our GDP, so how much New Zealand produces versus how much we owe uh, in our debt is 19%. That is way better than, say, Australia, who is at 36%, yeah. United Kingdom at 95%, and United States at 96%. So why that's important is because it means that if we need to respond to those extreme weather events, we have a little bit of cushion in order to borrow more. But again, we don't want to go. Um, we don't want to go there if we don't have to. The way that um, our government looks at it is, we don't want our debt to to GDP to go over thirty yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. So, in saying that, uh, yesterday the Minister of Finance um, last year we set out our government priorities. The Minister of Finance spoke to each theme. So that's supporting New Zealand with the cost of living delivering the services that New Zealanders rely on. So you know that's like making sure our schools. The properties are still being, um, you know, developed. You know, our roads are strong. That our health system, that we keep improving on our health system, which we know is under huge pressure. And then uh, the recovery and resilience, which includes economic resilience and fiscal sustainability, which is very much um, what I just talked about around that four billions of savings. So the other thing that I wanted to say is that you know, um, I love. Alpito Saul William Seal, you know, the Honourable Alpito Saul William Seal. Yeah. What he managed to deliver for Pacific people over the last five years has been the, the most significant investment into Pacific initiatives. And what you'll see maybe next uh, next week or the week after when we start to do our Pacific Caucus Roadshow is you will start to see where that money in the last five years has gone to. So you'll see how much of it's gone to community initiatives and how much of it has had to stay uh, in the centre to help deliver the people that can do those programmes, you know, so 
getting the money out to getting the money out to community providers and those people at the ministry. So you'll you'll we'll show that um, that graph over the next um, after budget next week and when we do our Pacific Roadshow. So even though um, the cost of living for us is huge for our families, we will be supporting some of our families through that. Um, but again, very much delivering those services so that when people get up in the morning, they know that their kids are going to go to a good school, that they can drive on a good road, that if they need health care, that they can get it. That is very much a strong pillar of this budget. So in a nutshell, I can't actually <laughs> say what's in the budget this year, um, but we are building on those previous budgets. We've got strong priorities and making sure that we support our families, specific families, through the cost of living crisis is, is one of those things. Grant Robertson, I did ask you last week, vaping. You were concerned about about the health of our people in New Zealand. Uh, what, what are your thoughts of increasing the, the vape age to 21? So um, at the moment, that's not on the, the government's not looking at that, um, about increasing the age. So as I said earlier this year, we we uh, tightened the, sorry, last week, we tightened the smoke-free tobacco laws. Um, that was at the end of last year. Uh, this year, between January and, and March, we had a consultation document out around where smoke, uh, where cigarettes and vaping stores can be, and those those regulations. So that was out for consultation. I understand that the decisions are going to be made shortly by the Minister of Health, but uh, lifting the age was not part of that consultation. So uh, we're not looking at increasing the age. We do accept though that there is a rising youth vaping uh, problem, but we need to tighten the other settings around it because what you've seen is. You know, with, with anything that can be harmful, whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, cigarettes, when when there's a will, there's a way for them to get it. So to make sure that we do our job is to tighten up the way that people can access it. So even though the vaping age at the moment is 18, you know, you, you will still have younger people have access to it. But again, if you raise it to 21, they'll still have access to it. So our job as government is tightening up how they can access it, such as where vaping stores are, the number of vaping stores there there are, and also the number of places that can smell, um, sell cigarettes as well. So those decisions will be made soon, and I can update um, our listeners well when they come out. Fifteen and two honourable minister, I will oil minister along more fale social minister for housing. It was reported this week a nineteen a nineteen year old gobble with a five year old baby. Uh, they now sleep in the car because they're saying the tra transitional house is moldy. Uh, there is a problem here uh, in regards of the house that they've been living in. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, yeah, so there are. Um, that is that is disappointing. That that poor couple and their baby has to sleep in their car. And um, what I absolutely strongly encourage is for that couple to go see their local MP, the local member of parliament, or go see the. Um, uh, talk to MSD uh, in Housing New Zealand around their, that particular housing because it's not acceptable they're in a Māori house mm. if that's the case. And so obviously what needs to happen is that caseworker needs to have a look at what's available for that family because for them sleeping in a car, is, it's not acceptable for us, which is why um, we have emergency housing as well where we put people in hotels because I don't, we don't, none of us want people sleeping in cars and none of us want people sleeping in hotels. But if the choice is the two of them, we need to make sure that they're in a safer, warmer place for them and their baby. So um, obviously the, um, there's a lot of work that we're doing. The, again, I go back to that the biggest um, thing that we can do as government is build more homes. And we have built more more homes. One in seven homes are now in New Zealand have been built by this government uh, for social housing. So, you know, that's a huge amount. And if in their transitional housing, it sounds like they're part of that social housing register. So until we keep building more and we, we're not taking the foot off the pedal for that, we've changed some of the rules to make it faster. Um, you know, that, that for me is my advice to that couple and actually any of our families who are living in that particular situation is talk to Kanga Order, if Kanga Order are who's providing it, the community housing provider, or 
go see their local MP, their local member of parliament. That's You have every right to do that. And even here in um, Porirua, I, I'm here in my particular, uh, my MP office, we have people coming here all the time for housing. And that's to, for us to make sure that when we call Kanga order, we advocate on their behalf to say, you know, are they at the right level? Is their, this house suitable? So we advocate for them as well. Uh, Honourable Minister, with due respect, uh, housing has been a problem for many, many years. How soon are we going to get out of the wood? Yeah, well, that's the thing with um, when we have immigration, we have housing, you know, the pressures that come with that. What had happened is basically the, the net immigration figures from before we came into government didn't, uh, uh, we didn't build enough houses. And that was the same over decades. It has been a long time problem in New Zealand. And so uh, where our population does not rate with the amount, the amount of the housing stock we have. So again, as, as government, our policy levers are the Resource Management Act, making it easier for people to build you know, larger, um, larger blocks of housing. For us, investing in Kainga order um, so they can do huge building projects for um, social housing. And also, Part of the, um, I'm not sure if uh, your listeners are aware, we've changed some of the urban planning standards. So it means that in some areas, some developers have the permission to build up to six house, um, six story houses. We need to build more and they're going to be different types of homes, but it's um, it's something that it's been over successive governments and we're not taking the foot off the pedal, pedal as well. I can't give you a date as to when, when there's going to be all the amount of houses to to be able to match what our population growth is but all i know is that for right now we're trying to build as much as we can okay uh, we're running out of time now but uh teacher strike uh what is it the government are doing to help our teachers so they um they will stop striking yeah, so the um, the actual negotiations are happening between the Ministry of Education and the two main unions of the teachers, NZEI and PPTA. Um, I can't comment on how those negotiations are going other than to encourage them strongly to keep looking at what's on the table from both sides. Um, and it is disruptive. You know, I acknowledge for our teachers, I've had lots of teachers come to see me and principals. I've been around to see some of our principals but the pressures on schools. So, you know, for some of the changes that uh, was announced a few weeks ago, the curriculum changes, um, that's to try and take some pressure off our teachers because they're saying it's not just about money. There's other conditions within the within their school that's make, putting the pressure on them. Oh. So, you know, supporting them in that, supporting trying to have more um, social workers in schools, mm. lunch in schools, all those things to take away that pressure. But the actual um, issue of money and negotiating the actual pay agreement that is currently underway, I can't um, speak to it because obviously um, that ne negotiation is live, other than to encourage our, our unions and our and our ministry to basically sit down and keep negotiating in good faith. Okay. I should, I should probably also add before yep. I go, um, it's International Nurses Day. Yeah. We have a really strong Pacific <laughs> nursing yeah. uh, workforce, so I just want to acknowledge our nurses today as well. Very nice of you. Uh, okay, before I let you go, Mother's Day coming up. Uh, anything nice from you for all the mothers listening to the program this morning Mince? oh happy mother's day <laughs> yeah. for sunday um you know i'm a mum of eight and uh, mother's day every day <laughs> so, and so um i just want to wish all latina a wonderful um mother's day um mm. on sunday i'm actually won't be spending mother's day with my family right. unfortunately i have to go to do a budget announcement in hawks bay right so, um, but I know, like I said, every day is Mother's Day. And, and mm. last night was probably the first night I had been home all week. So I got to sit down with my family and just mm. enjoy being in a household full of kids. <laughs> <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Five day tell love. Thank you so much, Honourable Minister. Well, happy Mother's Day to you. Yeah, and to everybody, have a lovely weekend and happy Mother's Day. Five day love. Honourable Minister Barbara Edmonds and the Nefo Entire. Photo to our radio, Samos Fulima, Eva Toro Amor.